Italy birthed ballet. France helped codify its terminology, but it's Russia that made this style of movement synonymous with its identity. If you look, a lot of the principal dancers, a lot of the dancers in the company, they either had Russian teachers, they either had Russian training. Russia has been on point when it comes to fanciful footwork. While in the United States, ballet is seen as entertainment for the elites, in Russia, it's mainstream culture. During the Cold War, America used popular culture to spread its views with things like movies and television. The Soviet Union counted with high culture in the form of music and ballet. The role of ballet in Russian culture has always been one that's connected to the government. Ballet is not just something people do or companies have done, but rather that this has become something that's seen as deeply connected to political power. Hey fam, I'm Imayan, and this Sunday we're starting to beat outside of our regular studio and telling you how Russia forever changed ballet. Why has ballet become synonymous with Russia and Russians? Because we are the great. Anton Pankovich knows ballet because it's been his entire life. There's literally a book on him. The Russian-born Stanford University instructor has spent a lot of time on his toes, using relevé, rond de jean, and plié to have his body articulate what words cannot. In the neoclassical ballet, we try to make of figures that not necessarily um, human. You can portray an animal, you can portray a tree, you can portray many different things. Pankovich put on his first pair of ballet shoes at age 10, and in doing so, he stepped into Russia's decades-long tradition of ballet dominance. They always put some, so much emphasis on culture. Culture was extremely important to Russia. Culture and sport, those are the one, those are the bread and butter, and they always succeeded in culture. So many think of ballet as a Russian art form, but it was actually the Italians who invented the dance in the 15th century during the Renaissance period. Ballet was how the European royalty entertained itself, says dance historian Lynn Garofola. There were not public performances, there were no stages, there wasn't a public theater, but rather it was something that was exclusively for the court. The first dancers didn't wear the tutus or the point shoes we've come to associate with the art today. And the language, words like bar, pirouette, and port de bras, it comes from the French who adopted ballet shortly after its creation. Ballet didn't arrive to the United States until the 1900s, which is centuries after it began. Its arrival coincided with a large wave of Russians immigrating to the U.S. after the Russian imperial government was overthrown and years of civil war followed. Russia nearly abandoned ballet following 1917's Bolshevik Revolution. That upheaval eventually birthed the Soviet Union and a communist party that would rule the nation for decades. In the revolt's aftermath, the powers that be tried to destroy what they saw as the trappings of the aristocracy. Revolution leader Lenin had originally intended to close the theaters, but peasants and farmers kept filling the audiences for the ballet. After the revolution, the number of Russians from the ballet world of Moscow and St. Petersburg, but also many other places, increased enormously. Since the Russian people wanted ballet and opera, the famous Bolshoi Theater was saved. As the Russian Empire died and the Soviet Union began, more than 2 million people fled the country. And that number includes more than 30,000 people who came to the United States to escape repression and the police state. Many of those people were aristocrats and professionals. In fact, the Mariinsky Theater in St. Petersburg lost a huge number of people after the revolution, and many of them later turned up all around the world, from San Francisco, with a huge ballet-centered community in Paris. New York also had any number of people. Those artists may have escaped Russia, but they didn't escape her very watchful eye. You have to realize this was during the height of the Cold War. The US and the Soviet Union were two world powers with drastically differing ideologies. And the close watch the Soviets kept on their dancers is just one example of their contrast. You were being constantly watched. Then you had to worry about what happened afterwards. And the parents, the colleagues, the fellow dancers, family, all of these would be subjected to surveillance and threats by the secret police and by the political authorities, sometimes years before a dancer would be able to talk to his or her mother, for instance, or someone close. But even when you did, you knew that someone was listening to the phone conversation. Coming to America wasn't easy for Soviet ballet dancers, 
But the outcome of all of Russia's unrest did forever change the art in the United States. It's Russian choreographer George Balanchine who became the father of the American Ballet when he co-founded the School of American Ballet in 1934. Russia's Ballet Russe tour had sparked an American interest in the dance and Russian defectors began to share their training. Today you can enroll in ballet class just about anywhere in the U.S. If it wasn't for Balanchine, I don't think ballet would have been as popular in America. Uh, Russian ballet has influenced pretty much, I believe, all of American dancing. The Soviet connection is clear. It's in the execution where Pankovich says you'll see the difference. He compared the two styles to a car race. It's like watching Indy 500 versus Formula One. Which one's Indy and which one's Formula One? Indy is American. Indy 500, Formula One is a European. So Formula One, so you have the fastest technology in the world and you have the most amazing race is what they have, and in the end, they just go in a circle. Look at the difference in the speed of the footwork. On the left is the Russian way, and on the right is the American way. Garofola says the Soviet Union is also the reason ballet saw an increase in the quality of male dancers. The Soviets early on had decided, had put a premium on the quality of male dancing, and so many of the roles were increased, were augmented, new variations, new solos would be added, and it was this tradition of male dancing that the Soviets brought to the West and electrified people. Mikhail Baryshnikov is one of the Soviets' most famous male dancers. He's considered one of the greatest ballet dancers in history, and he's actually the preeminent male dancer of the 1970s and the 1980s. At a time when one of the only ways Soviets could see the world was through touring with the arts, Baryshnikov wowed international audiences with his ability. And in June 1974, he wowed them with his defection from the Soviet Union. It was a big deal. Yes, ballet is about strength and beauty, but for the Soviets, it was also about power. Their art was a way to try and persuade people to the Soviet worldview without force or coercion. In this way, Soviet dancers introducing their style to a global audience was a sort of propaganda. In the same way, the West also used soft power, like having the CIA back abstract expressionist painters like Jackson Pollock, or producing movies like James Bond, which cast the Soviets as the bad guys. It's his murderous talents against the Iron Curtain. I believe the Soviets felt that this was one way of encountering what was the vast American influence abroad, and what essentially America exported, although it certainly didn't do so consciously. Consciously. And this led, of course, to a wonderful period of touring by Soviet companies. So this couldn't have happened in the U.S. without the Soviets because they essentially created the American version of ballet. Pankovich believes Russia will continue to dominate ballet because of the amount of monetary resources the government contributes to sustain the art. And for him, the most difficult part of ballet isn't securing the funding. I would say the most difficult thing about ballet is letting go. You have a certain memories that you remember how you look. It's hard to let it go because you have a certain memory and just don't dwell on the past and trying to share your memory with the dancers. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We spent the last several weeks covering all kinds of communities, Cambodians, Russian, West Indians. Tell us what you want us to cover in the comments, and we'll see you next Sunday.